Turn, if you would, to Psalm 100. <clears throat> I especially like days like today. It's awesome to see all of it come together, the procession of the children, the prayers of the people. As we gather together to worship God, it's an us thing. Focus on the God, the God of the universe, the God who's worthy of all of our worship, all of our praise. Psalm 100 is a psalm which kind of describes what we've been doing today. It describes a gathering of people, and it's as if they're outside of the, the gates of the temple, the gates of the city of Jerusalem, entering into the temple. It's as if they've begun to gather, and they're preparing for worshiping God. Now, through the years, we have this debate about whether people should talk in church or not. You know, when I walk into church, I want it to be really quiet so I can pray and read. That's what some people would say. Where when I come to church, I want a whole bunch of people talking and celebrating the fact that we're here to worship God and interacting. We haven't seen each other, a lot of us, for a whole week. Some of us, maybe halfway through the week or a couple times through the week. But we're joyfully gathering the fellowship, the, the reading of the word, the singing, the camaraderie, the, the unified focus on the truth of God's word is all really awesome as we come together. So I like the chaos of it all. I like the children coming up. I like the boxes. I like the prayers of all sorts of different people from within the congregation. Psalm 100 is a psalm. It's not formally in the category of the psalm of ascents, but it's a psalm which describes people coming together and worshiping God. Now, when Lisa and I were in Israel, it was almost exactly a week ago that we sat on the steps which led up to the gates of the temple or the compound of the temple or the court, uh, if you'd prefer. And as we sat there, we read some scriptures and we noticed that they said the steps were short steps and then there'd be a long step. And it was their tradition, and you can look it up on YouTube if you want, but people would walk up three steps, stand on the wider steps, and sing a song or quote a part of a verse. It's a psalm of ascent. It's a preparation to actually enter into the temple. And I liken that to what we do here today. We're, we're getting the kids together or not, whatever it is that you have. We're helping our, our loved ones out of the car. We're getting our Bible and we're shutting the door and we're making our way to church. As we make our way to, it, to, to church, in a sense, our joy increases because we're here to worship God with the people of God. Yes, we can worship at home, but this is when we worship God together. It's an assembly of believers. Psalm 100 describes it in four different stages. So poetry in the, in the Old Testament is different than our poetry today. Maybe not in every way, but it's not so much Jack and Jill went up the hill kind of poetry. This has to do with parallelism, parallel thoughts, progressive thoughts, and yes, there is some layout of rhyme and, and rhythm and all of that, but mostly it's looking for parallel thoughts. In this poetry, it is four movements which lead to a great conclusion, and the movements have to do with coming to an assembly to worship God. Physically, yes, physically approaching the temple to worship God, but also in a spiritual sense where as we approach God, we continually condition our minds to be able to worship him. Psalm 100. I'm going to read it for you. It says this. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord he is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. When we sang Great is Thy Faithfulness, it was a profound song to me. And it's a profound truth because in this passage, it talks about the faithfulness of God, his hesed love. Hesed is the Hebrew word for his faithful love, his enduring love. That's one of the reasons why we come together and worship God. And so the first movement we see, and, and you can disregard the points one and two if you want to, because really the passage is outlined by section one, which is verses one and two. 
as the Lord is approached in worship. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now, for some of us, it is just that. It's a joyful noise. And some people, some people would say, well, why did we have an instrument solo today? You know, what good is that without words? And the truth is, it is good. Because now we're making a joyful noise. Now, with the, with the Weidman's playing, it's a good noise. And the piano player and, and Jason and everybody. The, the point is, is that we're worshiping God by doing something. We're coming before him. And, and the movements of this passage actually indicate that we're preparing our hearts to come before God and to worship him. And so make a joyful noise. But it's not just us. It's the whole earth. That the earth should be bringing him praise. It goes on to say, serve the Lord with gladness. We did a lot of prayers about our service to God today. About the workers who are here serving God. What a joy it is to be able to come here and teach the children. What a joy it is to be able to come here and, and minister. To be able to serve in this church. Now, in some respects, living so close to the church isn't so good. <laughs> I was carrying Taco Bell in the other day, and it was falling. Uh, ten people were watching me carry Taco Bell in the house. And, uh, oh, they eat junk food. Um, <laughs> but in another sense, I love living over there because I can just pop over here at the church. And I am a little bit nosy. I think you'll notice that. But I love to be a part of what's going on. And I love to see how people are serving God. I know sometimes ministry can be a drudgery, right? You're like, oh, I don't want to teach today or I got a lot going on. But if our heart's attitude is, is that we're here to joyfully serve God, it changes the nature of what we do. And so we're to serve the Lord with gladness. It's a motivation for doing what we do. And then it goes on to say, come into his presence with singing, without regard to the quality of the singing, I think we should present the best of who we are to God. That doesn't make perfection or uh, performance uh, equal to worship. It just means that we should presenting who, be presenting who we are and what we have to God. To come before His presence with singing. So again, another issue dis discussed a lot is why do we sing so much, or why do we, you know, why do we have to? David wrote all these new songs. He would have driven you nuts because he had a new song that seemed like every month. And they had these songs that they would come before God and they would sing. Singing is the joyful expression of our hearts to God. Not every song. But for the most part, it's our opportunity to celebrate the God that we serve. And so we pour out in song and in music our love and our adoration for God. What a great way to prepare our hearts for worshiping God as we approach church. Now, I know we're not at the temple, but as we approach church to be singing some songs, to have some uh, truths in mind where our word, our, uh, the word of God is, is grooming us to be able to worship God. And so we want to sing. Music is a major part of who a Christian is. I think it ought to be. And so some of our music is going to be scripture. It's just scripturally based and scripture words some of our music would be a testimony of the faithfulness or the greatness of God for instance great is our faithfulness so we're we're telling God our testimony you've been so good to me God just blows me away some of our songs should be a testimony of how God worked how he saved us how he's redeemed us some of our songs should be about how we feel about God I love you Lord and I lift my voice and some of our songs should be prayers to God. Holy, 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 or the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us come before him with singing. The second movement of this psalm is in verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. So as we move towards worship, we're singing, we're celebrating God, but we're also acknowledging who he is, who is God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, he is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And so we're here to worship God, the one and only true God who's eternally existed, who is the Almighty, who's omniscient, omnipresent. He's all powerful. He is the one and only true God. He's eternally existing. He's the one before all time. And he's the creator of time and universe. He's the creator of all things that we can experience and our senses can know. It goes on to say that it is he who made us. 
It is he who made us and we are his. We didn't create God, even though some people's understandings of God is their own creation, because they think God should be this way, or God should be more loving, or God should have done it this way or that way. We tend to try to make God in our own image, but he's the one who created us. We're his creation, and we're, we are his. We belong to him. And so his relationship with us is personal. We are his invention. And not only that, we uniquely are his people. It says we're his people and the sheep of his pasture. We belong to God. Amen? Amen. He's our shepherd and we're the sheep. We are his creation. That's the second movement as we move towards worshiping God. The third movement is found in verse 4. It says this, and this is when I picture walking up the steps towards the temple. And as you enter the temple gate, there's a set of steps that goes up onto the court or the compound. Big flat area where the temple is. In Solomon's day, it was a smaller area, but it was an area nonetheless It was laid out as a place for the temple to be. And it says here, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I've heard this statement, when gratitude dies on the altar of a man's heart, that man is well nigh hopeless. I heard, I think it was Steve Funk the other day, he said, you can tell by where a person is at by whether they're thankful or not. You know, if you walk around saying, oh, they didn't do it for me, or pastor didn't say hi to me, or I didn't get prayed for today, and you know, whatever. It's like, where's your gratitude? Listen, God is so good to us. Amen. He's so good. Let us be thankful to the God who created us, to the God that we belong to. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. What a, what a place this would be, and it is. I can feel it. Somebody said to me the other day, they were visiting, I think it was uh, Chuck, came in, he said, when I walk into the lobby of your church, I feel it. There was once a book called It. It was written in, it, you know, some churches have it and some don't. Well, we have it. <laughs> it's like when you walk in, you just feel that God's at work. And that's an awesome thing. Well, when people come here to praise God and love on each other and just love God, what a place this is. And so we're to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Or in our vernacular, enter into those glass doors with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now we're on the Temple Mount and we're here just to worship God. We're here to give thanks to him. We're here to bless his name. And God, he is, God is worthy of worship. He is worthy of praise, which then brings us to the fourth movement. It tells us why. And it says this, for the Lord is good. He's so good. When Damaris Carbaugh was here at camp meeting, she sang, he's been faithful. And I went up and told her that's my favorite song, and I couldn't remember the title. <laughs> and she said, you mean he's faithful? Yeah, that's the one. I love that song because God has been so good to me. He's been so good. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. We sang it, great is thy faithfulness. His hesed love, it's that love that's never going to stop. Even though you, you might go through a hard time, or you might get a little mad at God, or you might feel like he's not acting fast enough, his faithful love is there. And it endures forever. That's profound. It's not like an earthly relationship. God will never fail. And so it concludes with this and his faithfulness to all generations. My proposition to you is this, worship God with joyful thanks. He is the creator and he is good and faithful in his love. For the past three weeks, I've been able to prepare my heart for this. I've been able to read Psalm 100. I've been able to see the work of God in the land of Israel. Going over this passage, all week, it's moved my heart to songs and to actions and to thankfulness to the God that we serve. My, we serve. My prayer is that you would also be stirred to enter into the courts of God with worship and with praise. If you're here today and you do not know Christ as your Savior, I encourage you. It's as if you're in, you're in the courtyard getting ready to uh, climb the steps and walk into the gate of the city. Won't you enter into... His courts will praise with us. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I urge you today, won't you repent of your sin 
and ask Jesus into your heart to save you. And if you're here with us today as a believer, won't you join us with all of this togetherness, this thanksgiving, the prayer, the singing, the food, being together, fellowshipping with God's people, and have a heart of, a, a, a heart of gratitude and a heart of praise. I'm going to end by reading Psalm 100. Then I'm going to close in prayer. We'll sing a couple of songs. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. God, I thank you for your steadfast love.